In this video lecture, I'm going to attempt to complete um, the Finch Lab and uh, yeah, the Finch Excel Lab. Okay, so you have to be able to open up the document in Excel, okay? And you should have your packet in front of you so you don't have to flip through so many screens. So we read the intro, the intro by Boag and Grant, and the file you look at right now is representative, sorry, representative, representative, it still doesn't sound right in my head, data from their study, okay? So we're gonna follow some procedures and analyze it, look at beak measurements on Daphne and Santa Cruz Islands, and then um, just kind of graph and, and do some statistical analysis. So using Excel, we're going to determine the average range and standard deviation of beak sizes and you got to make sure you type it into your word doc as well as you know figure it out using your excel spreadsheet so the first thing they want us to do is figure out the average of, of daphne and santa cruz so if you notice i'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top here we have daphne island beak sizes 1976 in millimeters okay and we also in column f is our Santa Cruz beak size. Okay. So I'm gonna make, make, make a mini table here. I'm gonna say Daphne, I'll say Daphne Island and uh, Santa Cruz. I'm gonna widen these out so we can see it. Okay. And they want to know the average, according to question one. Sorry. Okay, so the average. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do maximum, minimum, like literally just do a whole statistical analysis. The range. It also says that we need to do the standard deviation. And standard error. That's a new one. Okay. So remember with these, we can do equations. So we're going to type in equation. We want to do average. So I'm going to type in average and spell it correctly. And then this is Daphne Island, right? So the first data cell is A2. Okay. And you can click and drag, and that's going to take forever. Um, so you could type in A2 or tap on that box, but then you can also just hit colon and it ends at A752. So you notice how it's highlighted all the way to the end there. I'm going to say end of parentheses. So there's my average. Uh, maximum, okay. Max, sorry, max. Um, is it A2? to A752. Okay. The minimum equals min. Parenthesis A2 colon A752. And the range. A2. Nope. I must have a wrong equation here. That just doesn't seem right. Yeah, this is what I'm doing this. Hold on. I know why. <laughs> wow. Uh, the range is between your maximum and your minimum. Wow. I am smart. Um, so your range is maximum. Um, sorry. Your range is this cell minus this cell. I don't know why that was so difficult. So the difference between your maximum and your minimum. And then we also have an equation for standard deviation. S-T-D-E-V-A-T. 
two, sorry, A2 colon A752. All right. Okay, standard error. Um, if it says to figure out standard error, it's going to be your standard deviation divided by the square root. Okay. Our sample size should be 794 or... I said that wrong. 794 inches. Oh, because of both sample sizes. Um, so let's do it. Equals STDEV. The cells are A2 to A752. All right, divided by SQRT. And the sample says 794, so I'm just going to go with it. Alright, that sounds about right. Yes. Okay, so then to do Santa Cruz, um, we have some different cells. Okay. Santa Cruz goes from F2 to F44. F2, F44. F2 to F44. Maximum F2 to F44. Minimum F2 to F44. Range is your max minus your min, right? So like this minus that. Standard deviation, STDEV. F2 to F44. And standard error. Um, standard deviation. F2 to F44. Divided by square root of the sample. Okay, so then we also, it will not be a bad idea, I think, you, yes, you need to make a graph. So we're going to do some comparison of beak sizes to the islands. So we want to graph the averages. done it on the iPad, okay? So, trial and error, let's see what happens. No idea what, okay. All right, this looks about right. Okay. Chart's not the best, so we'll do some layouts. This one because it has the categories. What does that do? I'm going to give you a time. Maybe I can figure that out. Yeah, I think I can figure that out. Um, yeah, okay, we can figure that out. Okay, so here's my graph. Okay, so my. Now we're going to use the left arrow. Peak size, millimeters, and down here, um, island, right? Benches on the islands, on this island. Okay, and then we need to make this a little bit better. We need a chart title. Say, um, comparing average 
good size. Good size it is. I should probably be more specific. Uh, finches, right? Between Daphne Island and Santa Cruz. Okay. okay. Um, we are missing some error bars. So we're going to see if we can add error bars. And something tells me that we can't. But we're going to look. Ah, error bars, yes. Let's see if we can. If we can. Hmm. I'm not liking those error bars because they're not the values that we calculated the points. Okay, this. Let's right. go back to here. Let's just see if there's a way to. Right. I'm just going to try everything. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Um, because. If the error bars overlap, then it means that. Oh no, I just have to. Goodness gracious. That if they overlap, then it's not significant. Oh, I'm so sorry. Then it's not significant. And they're not supposed to be overlapping. It doesn't. It's close. And I wish it was, I wish we could do it actually on the laptop, because then you could type in. Um, the error bars that you selected and specify the values. Um, I'm just going to look one more time here. No, I'm not seeing that. That's unfortunate. Oh, well, that's the way it is. So we just made our first table, and the error bars are not supposed to overlap. Uh, I'm just going to slide my key over so you can actually see it. Oh, I thought I was going to. Let me just toggle this down. Um, I don't want this taken off the whole screen. Oh, that's not right. This is what it looks like. This is what it's supposed to look like. And you can see that the error bars are really, really small, okay, 0 0.03, and that they don't overlap. So we have significant data here uh, between the average beak sizes of our islands. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to the screen share. Here we go. Resume. All right, so we just did the first part. You're going to have to copy and paste that graph um, into your Google docs, documents, and, you know, type in the data that you calculated over here and answer the question, what can you conclude from all of this? Okay, number two, determine the average beak size of those Daphne Island birds that did not survive to 1978, okay, to those that did survive, the yeses in the survival column, and you're going to record that below. So I'm just going to slide this out of the way, okay? And I'm going to just type over here. Um, Daphne Island Finches survived. Survived. 1978. Can't type. Okay. And then I uh, died in 1976. we got to figure out the averages of the yeses, okay? So this first column, scroll all the way up, okay? So it starts off with those that died, okay? So you notice over here, like all of these birds right here, 
just keeps going down. They die. So I'm just going to make a mental note here. It starts with A2. And it ends at A662. A2 to A662. So I forgot the average. Average. A2. Whoops. These are the ones I died. Average. A2 to A662. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so now I gotta figure out the average of those that lived. And it's gonna end at A752 and start on. I don't remember where I started with. Oh my gosh. Let's just. So I'm going to start at A663. Average A663. And it ends at A752. There. Cool. So I'm going to make a graph of that. I just want average beak size between those that survived and those that did not survive. Okay, record it below. And then it says, uh, make a bar graph. bar graph. I just want to see what happens when I highlight everything. And so, check. Yeah. Okay. So, this is some. Alright, so we're going to come up with a title. Um, we're looking at average beak size again, right? So I'm going to say average beak size is of finches, so species, um, between average beak size is, average beak size is, I don't know, I'm blanking. Let's say comparing average beak sizes of finches that... Survived. Maybe I'll just say compare an average beak size of finches with de Daphne Island. I don't know. I don't know. Do that. Compare an average beak size of finches that I'm looking at the question two here. It says that did not survive to 1978. So I'll just say. Some more labels here. Oh, this one's on the back. But I do need a little bit. To your left key. And we're just saying average peak size and it's always really important to put the unit. Okay. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Then I would copy that and paste that into your Google Docs and then answer the questions what conclusions can you make based on your graph? Jeez, those that survived had larger weak sizes than those that you know, did not. Okay, now we're going to add a new column. Okay. I think it might be added. I'll go take a look. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top. Nope. Alright, so here, I guess you don't need to because I think it's built in. I need you to type in mid parent beak averages. 
I'm going to text wrap that. I think to do that. Just wrap text there. Okay. Mid parent beak averages. Okay, so we're going to find the mean beak depth of the parents, the mother beak, and the father beak for each of the offspring with known parents in 1976. You notice that they calculated the mother and the father, and we're just going to focus in on a uh, C and D2 down to C and D22. So to figure out averages, remember, um, we're just going to take the average of mom and dad. So, right there. And then um, I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to select all of these cells right here and paste it. And there's all the averages of mom and dad uh, together. comparing my answers to the key and make sure everything matches up. Okay, so we did that. Create a scatter plot. Plot this mean value above the min parent beak depth on the x axis against the offspring beak depth on the y. You may want to double click on the axes and increase the minimum axis options. So what exactly are we graphing here? Graphing and Give me a second here. So, I think we are going to be graphing the offspring and comparing it to the mid parent beak. Question is though, who are those parents? Or like, <laughs> who are the offspring? Is it uh, Daphne Island? Or is it Santa Cruz? I want to say it's Santa Cruz. Okay, hold on. Just with known parents in 1976. But something calls me it's Daphne because of that 1976. So. Okay, I'm going back to the beginning of my lab here. Okay. We're, right before it starts, uh, it says exercise. Uh, beak measurements were recorded of the birds from Daphne and Santa Cruz Islands. The parental beak sizes were known for some Daphne birds. Okay, so that answers my question. So we're going to make a scatter plot with mid beak average, okay, with the Daphne. And we assume that these values right here, uh, A2 down to A22, correspond to mom and dad. Here. Okay, cool. Glad, so glad we got that clarified. So, create a scatter plot. Um, mid parent beak on the X against the offspring on the Y. Now, in the actual Excel program, you would insert the chart and then you get to pick um, the value. So, I'm just going to see what happens if I do that. Chart. Scatter. This could be an epic fail. Okay. Oh, God. Graph. Everything. Okay, not good, not good. Dude. Okay, so I wonder what would happen if I. Nope, I think I'm gonna have to do some copy and paste. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually going to insert a column, another column here. Insert. Okay, and I'm going to copy this onto A22. Copy. I'm going to paste this. Let me see if this works. Okay. And then I'm going to graph 
these two columns. This is the offspring. These are the parent, the parent averages. Turn this into a scatter plot and see what happens. That looks about right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll take that. Okay. Let's slide this over just a little bit. Okay, so let's add some. Let's go to our layouts uh, because it says that we need to add on step seven, fit a regression line. And that regression line is like a slope. It's got the slope and regression. So we need this option right here. Let's go. These numbers match up to my key. Okay, so then let's finish it off with some titles. Okay, so this is the offspring. Peak size. Whoops, two small ones. And down here is the parent. Peak size. I really wish I could like hook and drag the formula just so it looks better. Um, not sure if I like my title. Okay, but it says fit a regression line to those title uh, to the data and determine whether there's a significant relationship. Make sure to include the equation on your graph. Determine the slope of the regression y equals mx plus b, where m is slope. The slope is a measure of the heritability of the trait beak depth between parents and offspring, reflecting the degree to which resemblance is due to shared genes. Oh, sorry. Heritability of 1 means the trait is 100% controlled by genes, where heritability of 0 means 0. Okay, so when we take a look at our R value, it's must be. M is the, sl the slope, sorry. M is the slope. M. 0.6603. So that's like over, that's like 66%, right? So we're going to copy and paste the Excel graph and um, attach it into your question and then answer some questions. What can you conclude from your graph? Is there a significant relationship? What is the heritability and what is it? Okay. Still, I don't think I like this. I'm going to say. Heritability. Heritability of peak sizes. Peak sizes and then death and inches. Okay, I like that better. Alright, so we got that. I think that's the last graph you guys have to make. Okay. And then you have to go back and look at the the original hypotheses and which hypothesis is best supported and why do we have larger these sizes. Okay, so that does it. I'm just gonna see if there's a I'm not seeing a line on my graph. Something regression. Let's see what linear linear looks like. There we go. I like the forecast. There we go. That looks better. That looks a little better. Okay. So yeah, there's... You can actually change the scale on this. At least I thought you could. Maybe yeah, I was mistaken on that. Never mind. Oh, we're just going to leave it then thought you can change the scale so you could spread them. Just kind of blow this up a bit on your graph, but it doesn't look like... Let's see what the range does. But I'm just going to mess around one more time. Axes. Yeah, so the app is limited. On Excel, you can, you know, select where you want to start and, and all that. Okay, so I just suffered through this. It's doable. Okay. Make sure you answer the questions and copy your three graphs into your Google Docs.